Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Nicole. I'm Jaden. And I'm Jason. And we are the Who in the Tour YouTube channel. We are glad that you are here. We appreciate your time and we are missing our little guy Cookie. Well, we don't that's his nickname. One of his nicknames. We have a lot of little nicknames for him. But he's out trying to tend to our fire, trying to get our fire cooking so that we can actually get some breakfast going. We're, we're struggling with some fires this morning. But we do not have him, so I will be alone on my reading. But how are you guys doing today? Good. Good. How's everything? Good. How was your day yesterday? Pretty good. Nicole, how are you? Good. Everything good? Yep. You don't like to be on the spot. You're not. Right. She's nor she's right across the table from me. She's normally not across the table. She's normally off to the side, and she doesn't have to answer questions because she's very, very shy, and she doesn't like to um, really talk at all on this. So we are getting the best of Nicole that we can get, and we appreciate you guys out there, your family, to us, and um, we really, really appreciate this time, and we thank you guys, and huge love, huge grizzly bear hug to all y'all, and uh, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Today is what day on the creator's calendar? Second day. It is a second day, yeah, and the first day was brutal. So I'm already beat up from the first day, so we shall see what the rest of this week shall um, ensue for us. Now, we are towards the end of our um, our commands. And because we are towards the end of the commands, I there is still a... Um, we are 227, which is the last... Uh, not the end of the commands, but the end of this chapter, this book. And so we still had a problem, and I want to take us back real quick to Leviticus 5, because I do not believe that we have this dialed in, but I believe that the Ruha Kadesh was uh, delivering some updates into Jubby's, Jaden's head. Jubby's yet another nickname, but we've talked to him before. So when you guys hear me say Jubby, that's Jaden. When I say Cubby, that's Caden. Uh, when I say Elko, uh, that's Eli. So his nickname is Elk. We, we call him Elk. And uh, I guess we'll put. And if anyone wants to know, they they nicknamed me what? Pharaoh. <laughs> Pharaoh. And so I guess we'll get that out. Anyone wanted to? to, to I don't know. And it, why, hey, it's not only me. The white, the my wife's name. They call her Pharaoh S. And uh, that's, that's me. This started about I don't know, probably like two years, ago, two or years. three years ago when we were building our house here. Uh, there was a day out here, and I was like kind of laughing about the. Uh, about the, the Egyptians and, and how they were beating up the, the uh, Hebrew people and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, get to work, boys. And I'm like, look, I'll be Pharaoh and you guys will be my slaves. And they started, they, they're like, they start calling me Pharaoh. And whatever reason, it actually caught on. And so Pharaoh is not actually like a, an evil name. Um, where's, the, where's the beginning of Pharaoh at? There's actually a regular human name. Except Jasher. Yeah. Jasher. And what happened? Who, where was the first Pharaoh? Uh, his name was just basically he was just basically king of Egypt, but they uh, there's this guy who ended up like taxing the dead. He ended up like t making people pay for like bury their dead. And he stuff was like so that. smart that the ruler of Egypt was like, "This is that's genius. We're gonna name every person that rules over Egypt after this dude because this dude is so smart." Yeah, and so this guy was like broke. He had nothing, and at one point he's like he didn't know how to get. Yeah, real head. creative. Yeah, he got real creative, and he um, he started taxing people to bury the dead. And so he wouldn't let people, be, and this guy wasn't even from Egypt, I don't think. I think he was just like a foreigner. And, um, but the guy got so rich and, and all of a sudden the, the real king of Egypt came by and like, was like, man, this guy's like, he's making it happen. I don't but, even think he was in Egypt. He was sitting outside the gates for a long yeah, time. Yeah, he wasn't even Egyptian or anything. And so he came up and he basically, this, <laughs> that's how it ended. But anyway, so here it is. And, uh, let's get into Leviticus five. Um, and I guess it, let's, let's. What do we have here? It's just, 19. It's basically just the top of it. Is the top, top part. part. Okay. And if a soul sins, and here's the voice of swearing, and is a witness whether he has seen or known of it, if he does not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass or an, of an unclean beast, or a carcass of an unclean cattle, or the carcass of an unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. So I think it's mostly verse one. Yeah. Verse one, yeah. So let's. Where do we have a place? I feel like that goes under. Um, if you see your neighbor seeing you rebuke him, because if you don't, <laughs> rebuke... Pantro. Right. Uh, that's just our dogs taking my heart rate to the top. All right, back to that. I, should, I believe it should go under rebuke your neighbor because it says if you uh, don't rebuke your neighbor, you shall or rebuke the person sinning, then you will bear that sin. So I feel like that should be under rebuke your neighbor. Okay, rebuke. Yeah, do not lie with a woman. Um, all right, here we go. Do not read the corners. And do not be a liar. Do not endanger. Do not hate your neighbor. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. So we have that as commandment number 71. 
And so we believe that that would go up into that. And so if a soul sins and hears the voice of swearing as a witness, whether he has seen or known of it, if he does not utter it, he shall, then he shall bear his iniquity. Now, is there anything else in this chapter? Uh, basically, the unclean stuff. It's just unclean stuff. So would yeah. it go into hygiene? Yeah, you go under hygiene. It's more like referencing the hygiene. It's like when he's a, uh, when he touches an unclean beast that is like carcass that is so, dead, he's unclean. Verse one will go under commandment uh, seventy the seventy one right here, and then verse two, if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast or a carcass of unclean cattle, any of that, the, uh, or the or touch the uncleanness of man, whatever uncleanness it be of man shall be defiled with all. Um, the hygiene law? Yeah, the hygiene law. So two and three will go under hygiene laws, Nicole. Um, four, or if a soul swear pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath and it be hid from him when he knows of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. So what do we have with this, guys? Um, That's like swearing maybe false oaths. Uh, Kate, you with me here? Yeah. What do you got? Um, I don't know if we have this already commanded, but it should be like if someone like swears, they will do what they say. Um, so yeah, so like he swears to do something. Like, I swear to do this or so and so. Uh, it should be like a command. If he doesn't do it, then he's guilty. Okay, I think that's probably right. Or it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things that he shall confess that he has sinned in the, that thing. So basically, you confess if you have sworn wrongly sworn you in sin yeah so this one would i think all of our commands are gonna have to go up because we're gonna have to go back to leviticus 5 and put these in so um if you swear an oath you got to do it if you you do what you say i guess it would be the commandment do what you say um and it's going to go way up high so that's going to be a little readjusting of our commandments up there and this uh, is four and five four and five Five, yes, four and five. And so that is a uh, up at the top. So, yes, every command we're going to be altered. I am super sorry, Miss Nicole. All right, and then six says, He shall bring a trespass offering to Yahuwah for his sin, which he has sinned. We can't do that. A female from the flock, a lamb. Okay, um, none of this. And he shall bring unto the priest, and he shall sprinkle the blood. This is all about the atonement so for the, this. The rest from here becomes the, what the Kohen does and everything. Right, how to actually uh, uh, account, atone, atone yeah. for this, right. I'm sorry. Can you tell me what the title of that was supposed to be? Uh, uh, let's see. Two and th was it? Four two and three. three? Four and five. Um, Swear, it, it Swear an oath or something. Do what you say you're going to do. Okay. I guess. Um, and then let's make sure the rest of this is good. And then I might actually sleep well because I think we got these dialed in. Um, but it might take a second. Panthro, knock it off. All right. Um, yeah, this is our life, attacking the dogs, or actually they attack us. Uh, soul commit any of these things which are forbidden by yet commandments, that he not, he is guilty. And if a soul sin, and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of Yahuwah, uh, he's guilty. All right. So this is the rest, I think, is all what you do if you sin. All right, so we sacrifice. ended up with one new commandment, and then we have this over there. All right, I think we're good. Um, all right, let's 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 break into our handy dandy split screen. Drum roll, please. Ba -da -ba -da. Actually, we listened to that yesterday, and it actually sounded like a drum roll. So did it? It did. So, anyway, Leviticus 27. All right, so let's read 27. Okay. The last and, chapter uh, of Leviticus. Yeah. If you want to uh, be scroll. like Eli, you scroll at the top. And, okay, uh, uh, do you want me to, when you read the verse, you want to go up or you want to stay at the verse? Uh, stay. Get up to just... You'll, you'll, you'll play it by ear. You'll, you'll, you'll be good, Joey. We got this. All right. And Yahuwah spoke spoken to Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for Yahuwah by your estimation. Wow, that did not make any sense to me at all. Okay, so what's it say in the NIV? Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If anyone makes a special vow to dedicate a person to the Lord by giving the equivalent value. Okay. Okay, so what do we got? What's your what's the Holy Scripture say? <clears throat> Speak to the Israel and say to them, when a man separates a vow by your evaluation of lives in Yahuwah, when you That's a dog getting smacked. Okay, go on, sorry. Alright, alright. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when a man separates a vow by your evaluation of lives unto Yahuwah. And then it goes under three. Okay. Set the value okay, so 
We'll have to figure this one out. In your estimation, I'm into three here, so head up to three, Jade. Uh, and your estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even unto 60 years old. Even your estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary. All right. I don't understand what we're doing here. Anyone? So it's like we're almost like setting someone apart, maybe? Redeeming what is the Lord. So we are redeeming people. Um, but I guess you can do it up to 60 years old. It's, huh. it's older than that. Uh, is it? Yeah. I'm two 60 years old? I, okay. read, I read down further. Okay. It goes older. So... Um, what are we doing here? How do we find a commandment here? So, so I think what it is is they're putting a price for each person. Like you have to pay this such amount. To be a human? To be alive? Like their tithe. Redeeming like what is the Lord's is the, is the command on that thing. That, or that's, this might be because when a man separates a vow. So that might be when... So when he separates a vow. So when his vow is complete. When he decides his vow is complete. He goes and pays y'all what is completed or something like that by the evaluation of the COVID, I think, is what that means. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we might get smoked on this one. Uh, let's see. In your estimation... Okay, so did I do three? Mm hmm And your estimation shall be the male. I'm just... I'm trying to get through this, folks, so I'm sorry here. Okay. And if it be a female, then your estimation shall be 30 shekels. And if it be from five years old, even unto 20 years old, then your estimation shall be of the male, 20 shekels, and for the female, 10 shekels. The good news is there's no commands here, but I don't understand exactly what they're redeeming. Okay, and if it be from a month old, even unto five years old, then your estimation shall be of the male, five shekels of silver, and the female, your estimation shall be three shekels of silver. Okay. And if it be from 60 years old and above, if it be a male, then your estimation shall be 15 shekels and for the female, 10 shekels. So the older you are, the more it costs to get you out of this. Uh... Not quite. No. No? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Why? Because the older you get, the less it is. What do you mean? It was 10. It, it goes over 60 here in a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, well, it just said right here, if it's five years old and a 20 years old, and the estimation shall be of the male. Oh, it is 20 shekels. Ah, oh, Nicole's right again. I hate that. All right. Yes. Um, okay. So are we on seven? Yep. Mm -hmm. And if it be from 60 years old and above, if it be a male, then your estimation shall be 15 shekels. And for the female, 10 shekels. See, they're older, but it went down. Oh, uh, the old. They're not, they're not so. Don't, don't tax the old. Yeah, they're too, they're too old. They're not going to live as long. All right, but if you be poorer than your estimation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall value him according to his ability that vowed, that vowed shall the priest value him. And if it be a beast, whereof men bring an offering unto Yahuwah, all that any man gives of such unto Yahuwah shall be holy. Now, is this the redeeming of the firstborn of everything? This might be what it is. And so if you're trying to redeem these people, I mean, I don't know how I'd redeem you, Jade. Uh, I don't know. If you go to the priest and give him a certain amount of cash. How much shekels in today is... But what uh, if the priest saw it and was like, well, this is quite an expensive, expensive person. Yeah, I might look at you though and go, hey, it's a little cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Would, you be, <laughs> would, they, would they be offended? Uh, hey, man, look at me. Am I in good I, shape? I uh, think it'd be cheaper the better. Yeah, I'd, I'd feel that they value me less, be like less money. Okay, Probably that's good. roll around on the ground, throw dust on their heads, <laughs> batter themselves up. I'm here. <laughs> With these terrible clothes. Yeah, but I, I don't understand this. Somebody out there, if you guys understand what exactly and how we are redeeming this and what this process is, because I guess if you make a vow to Yah um, or you, you dedicate a firstborn, if you're, I don't need, I don't know. There's like some process of redeeming. I, I, I'm totally missing this. Or just, so, maybe if we just finish reading the chapter, it might explain something. Maybe. All right, let's continue on. It's obviously for the priest. Though. It's obviously for something to do with the priest. So not quite for us just yet. How do you know this is a priest? Well, the priest has to evaluate it. The priest has to evaluate, priest has to evaluate who the person. Yeah, how much the person's worth. And right. So what's, what does that mean? What that you, means we can't quite, whatever this is, we don't have the ability to do this. Well, we can't even give our shekels either who we are our shekels to. Seize our ears. Yeah, but I mean, we'd still want to dedicate our firstborn, and we'd still want to go down that process, I believe. I mean, not to the point of the priest. But anyway, let's do what Nicole says, and let's continue on. He shall not alter it, nor change it. A good for a bad, or a bad for a good. And if he shall at all change beast for beast, then it and the exchange thereof shall be holy. And if it be any unclean beast of which they do not offer a sacrifice unto Yahuwah, then he shall present the beast before the priest. 
and the priest shall value it, whether it shall whether it be good or bad, as you value it. Who are the priests? So shall it be. Okay, so the priests aren't just like uh, these guys are now uh, almost auctioneers or uh, yeah. like no, what are they evaluators. Called? Why would they be buying unclean animals? Like what's brokers. the point? I, brokers. Wait, I don't. Th- why did it say unclean animals? It says ceremony unclean. Like a ceremonial decade. unclean, which means it would be like have a cut or a cess or oh, okay. like if, if if it was the firstborn, I think. And then you ended up with like a, uh, I don't know, they're cyst like the, or something. They're the human brokers. They're like, how much is this human? Yeah, weight? oh, this guy looks, he looks bad. Mm, cheap. All right. Um, did I do 13? But if he will at all redeem it, then he shall add a fifth part thereof unto your estimation. Uh, redeem it, then he shall. So, but how did you redeem something? What does this mean to redeem it? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out. Um, and the priest shall value it, whether it be good or bad. Okay, so if it is, um, if it's good. Then he's going to add, but he if he will at all redeem it. So it, he's it's basically up to the priest whether or not he's going to uh, take this in. And if he does, then they have to add a fifth part unto that. Okay, could this be like the slaves? You know how you had to redeem it if you want to redeem something that's your brother's? Maybe that's what they're doing. Like they want to buy something off their brother's back. Or they want to buy like their, a slave or something. Then they, I, they, I don't know. I have no idea. And when a man shall sanctify his house to be holy unto Yahuwah, then the priest shall estimate it, whether it, it be good or bad, as the priest shall estimate it, so shall it stand. And if he that sanctified it will redeem his house, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of your estimation unto it, and it shall be his. See, how would you, how okay. would you, okay, what do you got? So I'm, so he, so basically they gave their house to the priest, but then they want to buy it back. They got to pay one fifth more than what they sold it for. What? The priests all have their own houses. Right, but they said they give it to Yahuwah. He just gave his house to Yahuwah in the last verse in 14. And when man shall sanctify his house to be holy unto Yahuwah, then the priest... It, he's only saying... He's not saying the priest's house. He's saying that he, it's sanctifying uh, his house before Yahuwah to be holy. Um, so, I mean, this is something different other than priests. I don't think this is a priest thing. Hmm. I don't know. Right. I, I don't do know. not know. All right, 15. And he that sanctified it will redeem his house. Then he shall add the fifth part of his money of your estimation unto it, and it shall be his. I love rereading things twice. Sorry, folks. And if a man shall sanctify unto Yahuwah some part of a field of his possession, then your estimation shall be according to the seed thereof. A homer of barley seed shall be valued at 50 shekels of silver. Maybe we're looking at this wrong. I think this is like if you had, like if you had a, like a, let's say you had 30 acres you would want and use like, you know what? I am so blessed by Yah. I am going to dedicate 10 acres to Yah. What would you do with those 10 dedicated acres? You, you would give them to the priests. Pri- priests or something else. I mean, we're guessing. We're just simply guessing this entire thing. Um, but at some point, if you decide that you don't want that to be Yah's, then you got to redeem it. And add like a fifth or something to it. So it's kind of like a kind you're of taking Scrooge or something. You're uh, Indian given, as they say. Indian given Yah. All right. 17. If he sanctify his field from the end, from the year of Jubilee, according to your estimation, it shall stand. Okay. Wait, so now this is where it comes in, like, with the firstborn. If you could dosha, you set them apart, and then you have to redeem them if you don't want them set apart. Why wouldn't you want somebody set apart? Well, yeah, but the question is, what would you do with someone that's set apart? Well, what How would they live? What happens to that people? What, what, that? People? what well, happens to the stuff? I don't know. I think this is, I think it's where we're getting into what it means to redeem a human. As if, because like the firstborn and the first beat of the animal. Why would you want to be redeemed though? If you were sanctified, you were set before Yah as whatever it was, wouldn't you want to walk with that all your life? I think that means you like a Nazarite or something. And I think uh, other members of the family, like you couldn't like quite do the same thing as the rest of your family did. You had to be very different. You had to like live a different life, almost like a, not quite a priest life, but something a little different. It's interesting. If anyone out there has any idea what this chapter is about, please let us know. All right, but if he sanctify his field after the Jubilee, then the priest shall reckon unto him the money according to the years that remain, even unto the year of the Jubilee, and it shall be abated from your estimation. Unless it's deducted. Right, and so um, if he's sanctifying his field after the Jubilee, so basically after the 50 years, you would want to sanctify it, um, then, uh, yeah, okay. So 19. And if he that sanctified the field will in any wise redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of your estimation unto it, and it shall be assured to him. All right. Anyone have anything on this? And if he sanctified the field in any wise. So basically after the Jubilee, uh, so, you want to sanctify it. So that means I think you would set it apart. You would basically set this apart. 
I don't know. I don't. I don't have the slightest clue, guys. We're really botching this one today, but I, I don't know. Good thing there's no commands here because I don't know what they'd be. All right. Um, and did I do, do 19? Are we on 19? That's what I think. Okay. And if he that sanctified the field will in any wise redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of your estimation unto it, and it shall be assured to him. And if he will not redeem the field, or if he have sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed anymore. All right. But the field, when it goes out, out in the Jubilee, shall be holy unto Yahuwah as a field devoted. The possession thereof shall be the priest. Okay, that might actually dial this in for us right there. Okay, so if you if you devote it to Yah, it's the priest, right? That's what I'm getting from this. So did that make you, when you set apart a human, did that make you the priest servant? Uh, a Levite? I don't think you couldn't be a, be a Levite. Levite. But would you be like the priest servant, like uh, almost like a slave? Maybe that's what it meant to slave. redeem. Slave. Oh, maybe that is. Maybe that's what it is when you redeem it. That's why you don't want them because you don't want them like to be like a servant. You want them to still be a normal human, right? You want them to be like, like part of the family instead of the servant of the priest. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, I would, you know, you would want to get as much land as you could and probably dedicate as much as you could to Yah. Um, I, I, I just don't know what the stipulations and the conditions are for that. And if a man sanctify unto Yahuwah a field which he has bought which is not of the fields of his possession, then the priest shall reckon unto him the worth of your estimation, even unto the year of the Jubilee. And he shall give your estimation in that day as a holy thing unto Yah. So you're selling, you're making money here. Um, so if you had a field, this is what it said, if you had a field um, that, what, that you bought, which is not of the fields of your possession, so it's brand new, the priest will basically estimate it. He'll take, see how much it's worth, even unto the year of the Jubilee, and he shall give your estimation in that day. So if a priest is going to give money, and then they, I guess they buy the field, or they get this field and up until Jubilees or something of the sort. That's, that's interesting. There's like a whole business model here for the priest. All right. In the year of the Jubilee, the field shall return unto him of whom it was bought, even to him to whom the possession of the land did belong. Okay, so we knew that, but is it still, is it still sanctified? I mean, it comes back to I mean, you. I think the Jubilee comes back to you. It's no longer, you no longer have it to Yahuwah. It's not yours again. Huh. Wow. Okay, I wonder if the priests actually, like, worked these fields or something of the sort. I mean, I'm, I think they Maybe were. that's what the people that were uh, not redeemed were for. Yeah, the workers? I don't know. There's a whole, this whole brings in a whole new light to this thing. And all your estimations shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary. Twenty gurahs shall be the shekel. Only the firstlings of the beasts, which should be Yahuwah's firstlings, firstling, no man shall sanctify it, whether it be ox or sheep, it is Yahuwah's. All right, so I don't know what that means when they sanctify an animal. Since the firstborn already belongs to Yahuwah. Do they just put these cattle in the field that they've sanctified or somebody offers up a field? Um, I hope there's something later on in like Numbers and Deuteronomy that explains this. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's interesting when we read it, trying to pull out commandments, because we've read through Leviticus 27 how many times? A zillion times. Mm. I mean, we've been through the Torah a lot. And until you, I mean, you can just read it, but you don't comprehend it unless you're really trying to dial these commands in. All right. And if it be of an unclean beast, then he shall redeem it according to your estimation and shall add a fifth part of it thereof. There too. Sorry. Or if it be not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to your estimation. All right, so an unclean beast. Are these guys dealing with pigs? What are we dealing with here? Uh, maybe back to the animal with cuts and stuff? Well, it's, uh, it would that make it unclean or just make it not sanctified? I don't know. I, I, I guess I, it would be unclean. I don't, think they, I don't think they would have a need for a pig. Maybe they're like trying to clean out a field or something. I don't know. I don't think they would want pigs. I do not know. All right, notwithstanding no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto Yahuwah of all that he has, both of man and beast, and of the field of his possession, shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted thing is most holy unto Yahuwah. None devoted, which shall be devoted of men, shall be redeemed, but shall surely be put to death. Wow, what happened here? So up in the NIV, no person devoted to destruction may be ransomed. They are to be put to death. Oh, so I guess of these people, what is this destruction here? The Hebrew term refers to irrevocable giving over of things of persons to the Lord, often by totally destroying them. Maybe that's what the firstborn was. You would totally destroy them, kill them. Sorry, firstborn, Jubby. 
I that don't say. sounds wild. It does sound wild. All right, 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is Yahuwah's. It is holy unto Yahuwah. And if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. Oh, boy. This is just getting in deeper. I don't know what this means. Uh, uh, so basically, if you give a tithe and you want it back, you got to like pay one-fifth added to it. How would that work? I don't oh, think it, the land. And all the tithe of the land, uh, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is Yahuwah's. It is holy. And if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes, uh, 31 would, would Ninavi says, whoever would redeem any of their tithe must add a fifth of the value to it. I don't know what they're getting I back. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. This is definitely not for today. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passes under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto Yahuwah. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which Yahuwah commanded Moshe for the children of Yashrael in Mount Sinai. Okay, that was really confusing. Very confusing chapter. Yeah, that was, that was probably the worst or the most uh, under under understood. Um, At least explained chapter. Yeah, explained. I, I don't know. So this we would definitely need priests. We would definitely need some examples of what we would be doing here. And um, yeah, that is uh, that is that wraps us up out of here. We are done with this book. Um, numbers, we go into this, we got 36 chapters there, and then we have 34 chapters left. So we have, uh, about 60, 70. 70, 70, chapters left and we will be done. So 70 days. Yeah. Oh. 70 days. Um, yeah, that seems like we've been at this like a really, really long time. All right. So gentlemen, do you have anything else for anybody out there? Um, read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. Yeah. Read your Bibles so that we can understand this stuff so we can figure it out. It's very important that we do. Um, we need to write these on our, our hearts, minds, and souls. And I guess I, I feel a little bit, um, I feel a little bit bad that we don't understand some of this stuff. You know, we, we know the Torah. I would like to say we know the Torah well, but at the end, you know, there's a lot of this stuff that we don't even have a clue about. And so that's probably why they had other people to teach them what this priests. stuff was. Yeah. Priests. Why or they had, had priests. The, the I'm teachers. sure there's more of an explanation of what it meant to redeem. I'm sure we already had an idea of what it meant to redeem someone. And I'm sure somebody out there would probably know. So if you guys do know and can drop this in there, we will definitely bring this up tomorrow um, when we go over our uh, Yahoo and the Torah and the commandments. And so I guess that's it. Um, Jade, take us home on this. Where, where does... Why does and how, why is it important that Messiah Yahushua died for our sins? Well, there's a few things. One, we didn't have a full, a true repentance, a true pardon for our sins. There's kind of a good don't go sin again. You didn't really have redemption from breaking that, that sin and breaking the Torah. So now that we have Yahushua, we have true repentance. We can truly be forgiven for that sin so we do not die a second death, which that is a spiritual death which can send us to hell. Yeah, spiritual death will send us to hell, and we will all. We will all die the, the physical death, right? And, and that's just, you know, from dust to dust we came and, and dust to dust we will go. But the spiritual death, um, you, know, I, you know, I look around and there's nothing that I see that is bad in creation. I don't, I cannot find something that just, wow, this was designed poorly or something. I look around and I see man-made stuff all the time. And I'm like, man, that's really poorly designed or, you know, they could do better or something of the sort. But there's nothing with creation. And you look at, you know, simply the blades of grass and you look at the, the environment around us. So, I mean, we live out in the middle of a jungle and I guess we, we would appreciate, um, I, I don't know. I don't know if anyone else out there would appreciate this kind of lifestyle. It is, uh, there, how many days, how, how often do you guys go through a day without being bit? I think a bit at least once every day. Yeah, uh, several times a day. I, you, there's, there's at least, uh, I don't know, sometimes, you, sometimes I walk away from just sitting down in the house and I'll have like four or five bug bites all over my arms. There's this thing, little things called no see -ems. And because um, you don't see them, yeah, the, you don't see you don't see them. We don't know where they came from or where they went, but we do know that they took a, a chunk of our, our flesh with us, with them. And so we are um, we are very very blessed with where we are, and I hope you guys are blessed with where you are. Our Creator is a magnificent Creator. His Son is is just He took such a load off of our backs that we are able to. Um, live a different kind of life right we are to live a life and if you are 
living this life where you think that you can put the laws of our creator on the cross and the Holy Spirit is going to drive you. That is a programming uh, pr construct of a, a religious system. And the religious system, the thing about the 60,000 religions is there is no, there's, it's, it all falls away from the Bible. When you start getting into any religion, you just take any religion at all and you go and you find what their, um, what their uh, I don't know, doctrine is. Read the doctrine of any religion and they will just start throwing man-made stuff in there and it is it is a mess. All the way from, uh, you know, any religion that's out there. If it, if it strays away from the, the, the scriptures, which it does, right? If you're worshiping on Sunday or first day, that's the wrong day. Uh, if you're paying tithes to a guy in a, a church, he's not a Levite. He's not a priest. You're just giving your money away for the fun of it. Um, and whether or not it glorifies Yah, I do not know. But it is not what our creator has set up. He never set up man to be a priest inside of a first day temple. Imagine that. Imagine that, that you're, if you're saying that there's a priest on a first day temple and people are worshiping there, it, it's, it's a synagogue of Satan. And so we got to get our, our lives right. We got to get our doctrine right. We got to get our everything we have right. And uh, it's very, very important that we do this. And um, I guess that's all I got. Anyone else have anything else? Uh, Proverbs Proverb said the righteous don't fear death. And you're not talking about a physical death because Yahuwah can definitely kill our physical body. But uh, we can always have the second death, so don't fear that if you are righteous. If you are breaking commands, you should definitely fear you will die a second death. Yeah, yeah, if you're living, I mean, that's that's the, the liberty of the Torah, right? The liberty of the Torah is that you're not, you don't have guilt. You're not being guilt-ridden all your life because you are against the, you know, walking contrary to the way of our, our Elohim. And that's that's just bad news. It, it's a bad thing to do. The, the creator of the cosmos is the greatest he has, he has given us so much hope, so many dreams, and, you know, he created us and loves us enough that he set up a path that we can walk to him and we can seek him. Most don't. And so this is the world that we live in. And you can look at the world where most don't, right? Most don't. And you're, you're, when you don't, you're living in watching TV, you're watching movies, you're listening to evil satanic music. Um, anything that's on the, the radio is satanic. Anything that's on the TV is satanic. You know, you'll, you will simply watch a commercial on TV and they show the nudity and that's corrupting your mind. Your eyes are the windows to the soul. We need to shut off those TVs. We need to shut off the, the radios. We need to shut off that ungodly um, style of music. There's no such thing as, as godly Christian music. I, I'm going to expose a gal named Becca Shea a little bit either today or tomorrow. And I'm going to show that she's a, a contemporary Christian uh, that has lost her way. And so all of these people ha at some point have lost their way and have sold themselves out and you do not make it in Hollywood, you do not make it on TV, you don't make it in the music industry unless you have literally made a pact with the devil and they will use whatever weak skills you have and they will make them large and you will be on top of the world. But, you know, this is the best world now. This is the best life they have now and at the end they're all going to turn into old wrinkly nasty looking things and then they will die and their souls will be gone and it talks, it's very bad when you, when you read Second Ezra uh, and it talks about the people that go and where they're, how Yah is going to do it. The second you die as somebody outside of Torah, you live in fear. Your, your existence is in fear because you know the Elohim is here. And so from the time you die to the time of judgment, you will be sitting there just in, in horrible, horrible agony. And then What's worse is then when your your soul is sent to hell and you're pelted with fire and it's just, you know, even if hell wasn't burning, even if it wasn't a horrible place to be, you are surrounded by people that love evil. And if you sit there and these people are wicked, the wickedness of this world is out of control. It, these people are wild and it's, it's sick. And so we got to get our lives together. We got to get it right with the Torah. Salvation begins at the cross, at the stake with Messiah Yahushua. And there's no other way to the kingdom. There's no other name under heaven by which man may be saved. All right, guys. Much love. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.